And today we're taking a look at how to change your car's brake pad. And this is so simple, anyone could do. And these are the things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a jack to raise your car, some jack stands to hold your car from falling, a ratchet set, a brake depressor, and some wheel shocks. And remember, everything used on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description of the video. A pro tip, using gloves will make it easier for you to clean your hands later on. The first thing that we wanna do is press the emergency brake. If it's a foot pedal, press it down. If it's a hand lever, pick it up. Now we wanna go ahead and place the wheel shocks because the last thing we want in a clear sunny day is to die. Let's go ahead and place our jack under the vehicle, but we're still not gonna raise it. If you have a wheel cover, we go ahead and remove that now. We're gonna take our nut remover bar and break each nut. And you wanna do this with the car on the floor because it will be a lot easier, unless you have an impact drill. If you notice, we're missing a nut and ball on our front tire. We're gonna do a wheel hub replacement video. If you're interested on that, we're gonna leave a link on the description. Now that the nuts are loose, we can go ahead and start jacking up the car. Once up, we can adjust the jack stand and place it under the vehicle. If you need to raise the vehicle a little bit more, go ahead. We can lower the vehicle slowly to our jack stand. Let's go ahead and finish removing the nuts. Go ahead and remove the wheel and for an extra precaution, we like to place the wheel under the vehicle. In case for any reason the vehicle drops, it has something else to avoid it from hitting the floor. Now we have access to our brake caliper. And from here, if you're not sure if your brakes are wasted from the slots and using a flashlight or your cell phone, you can look inside and verify how your brakes are doing. The first thing that we want to do is remove the caliper. And like that, we will have access to our brake pads. There are two screws that hold the caliper in place, one in the bottom and one on the top. In our case, it's going to be a size 12. In your case, it may be different. If you have a set, you can go ahead and try starting at 12 and either going up a number or down a number. And like that, keep going until you find yours. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and break the nut. Usually lefty loosey, righty tighty. And you do that thinking, looking at the ball, which is the left and which is the right. So from the angle that we're looking at the ball, it's going to be to the right. But if you stand right behind the ball, looking at it straight, it's going to be the left. Once you break the initial pressure, you can basically take it off with your hands. If you notice it's too tight, you can place some W40 and wait a couple of minutes or hours and then try it. Let's go ahead and do the same for the bottom one as well. Now we can go ahead and remove the caliper. You may need to wiggle them out, but they should come out with ease. We can take a piece of rope or zip ties and tie it to a part of a vehicle that it won't be in your way or fall down. And remember, when removing the caliper, remember that it's connected to the brake fluid line. You don't wanna pull it too hard or too far away from the vehicle. Now we remove the brake pads to the side. You may need to wiggle them out, but they should come out with ease. In our case, we still have brakes left, but because we're changing the wheel hub, we decided to change them anyways. As you can see, 
one of the clips came off with the brake pad. The only thing we have to do is just look at the other one and see how they're placed and put them back. If you notice your brake hardware are bad, this would be the time to also change it. You may have two types of brakes, one with a little stick on it, and that's the one that squeals when the brakes are wasting. That little stick rubs against the metal and makes that squealing noise you hear when the brakes are finishing. A great way to know where a witch goes which is by remembering how they were before. But usually the one with the stick goes on the outside part. If you wanna add some brake lubricant, this would be the time to do so. We're going to do this on each end of the brake pad and you can also do this on the outer back plate of the pad. And remember, you don't want to get grease anywhere else. If you feel you need to clean your brake system, this would be the time to spray brake cleaner on it. Let's go ahead and place the new brake pads. And we basically do this the same way we took them out. We slide them back in from the side. Now we can remove the rope or the zip tie from the brake caliper. If you would try to place your brake caliper back, you would notice it won't fit. And that's because they're adjusted to the amount of waste that the brake pad had. Now placing the new ones, you would need more space to place the caliper back. That's why we're gonna use the brake depressor. If you're interested on that tool, we're gonna leave a link on the description. And to do that, we take one of the old brake pads, we place it next to the cylinder and we place the brake depressor on the other side of the metal and start twisting. If you don't have a brake depressor, you can also use the old brake pad and push it down. You can use your mega hands or anything you can use to depress the cylinder. Now that we have enough space on the caliper, we can go ahead and place it back. We can take our two bolts back and place them by hand. Once we can't tighten them by hand, we go ahead and use the ratchet. And basically you want to tighten them as most as you can with your hands. To give you an idea, it's like tightening your tire nuts back on your wheel. You want them tight, but you don't want to over tighten them. If you haven't removed the brake lines from your brake caliper, you don't have to bleed the brake line. Well, pro tip, you can always use an empty bottle of water to catch the brake line fluid if you're ever going to do so. If you're interested on how to bleed your brake lines, we'll have a link on the description for that video as well. You can go ahead and place the wheel back. Now you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. And now that you've done one side, now you can repeat the same process to the other side. And once you turn on your car and get behind the wheel, you should be able to pump your brakes a couple of times on parking and that should get you back to normal. If you notice air still on your brakes, then you might need to bleed your brake lines. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video.